It's my feel good breakfast show. Welcome back to Feel Good Breakfast Show. This is Expresso, you're live in S3, and we need to talk about what is a very, very important subject, and that is diabetes. It is a chronic disease that causes significant challenges for patients. According to the International Diabetes Federation, 24 million adults in Africa currently live with diabetes, and by 2045, the figure is expected to rise by 129% to 55 million. That is incredible. And with us to discuss more about diabetes and how to monitor diabetes is Keegan Hall, Vital Air's marketing and product manager. Um, he has brought a special friend as well. And then uh, sat alongside him, another special friend, diabetes activist, Tapi Semenya. And a little bit later, we'll be joined by the one and only Holly Ray, who we know has had a personal journey with us. But thank you so much to both of you for being here bright and yeah, early. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the start of a, a new week, I know. But yeah. um, feeling sharp and vital, excuse yeah. me, um, that we have this conversation. I had no idea how far-reaching diabetes is. Yeah. It's massive. You know, when it comes to, to diabetes, uh, there are so many facets. But let's start off with the concept of CGM. You know, for those who are not au fait and need a bit of an education, what is CGM? <laughs> That's a great question, yeah, right? You. I mean, <laughs> it would have been my first as well. Yeah. You know, like, <laughs> CGM. Yeah, so, so CGM is a, a relatively new innovative technology that has been that has exploded in the world when it yeah. comes to diabetes management and it's called a continuous glucose monitoring device. Okay. So obviously the way in which traditionally people living with diabetes used to be able to manage or check their glucose was through a finger prick. Yes. And so much information is missed. How do you know where you were? How do you know where you're going? Yeah. And sure. yes, okay, you might be 5.8 millimole now, but where are you gonna be in 30 minutes? And this is the value that CGM brings to wow. someone living with diabetes. And it measures the glucose every five minutes. So it's giving you a glucose reading every five minutes to a compatible smartphone. So I remember wow. my one wow. colleague who, who also happens to live with, with type one diabetes. And when she was a, a kid, she <coughs> always wanted to be able to see her glucose values on a mobile phone. Yeah. And yeah. that became a realization. And it, it's all about making the life of someone living with diabetes easier. And that's what CGM does and what Dexcom have done um, by bringing this yeah. innovative technology to, to people living with diabetes. It kind of feels like a bit of a quantum leap forward. And it's data, 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 data. data. Yeah. This exactly, feels man. like the new medical frontier from what we've experienced with COVID has very much been about the sharing and processing yeah. of data and how we yeah. use that. But people need to be aware. People need to know. Topic. They need people the data. Need to, yeah, yep. we need to be able to process and contextualize. Step in the role of an activist in this space. Now, of all the things that we need to stand up against, one might think that diabetes flies under the radar for, for good reason, because not a, enough of us know about how far-reaching the effects are and what that can mean for an individual. What led you to this point? Why was this the line in the sand for you? Why? Do you need to stand up and say this? I mean, my journey was, like, I was very lonely in my journey. When I started out, it was not as easy as it seems. Um, it was more like, you know, I felt like I was, cons like, conflicted and yeah. constrained. Um, and so I just wanted to just get out there and let people know that, you know, we are living with diabetes and, you know, there are so many of us. You're not alone in your journey. And, you know, let's talk about it. Let's engage. Let's give hope to one another because it feels such a lonely journey. And for me, I feel like, you know, getting on Instagram and just talking about it was the first step for me. And yeah. then, um, obviously, I then got introduced to technology and that was like life-changing and changing and yeah. it was like for me i just got into it and i was like you know what i need everybody to be on this like i need each and every person living with diabetes in south africa to literally be on this device to know yeah to, to know. know and just yeah. to create that awareness you know and just spread education about diabetes because there's so much stigma and there's just so much to talk about and we're all going through different you know paths and journeys but you know it's what brings us together mm. as well and I would imagine within that, each personal journey has insights, has mm -hmm. a perspective, has an understanding that needs to be shared within the community. I love that. Mm -hmm. And it's important as well because, you know, when you share your journey, uh, you start realizing that other people can actually say, this is how I found out I had diabetes. Mm -hmm. yeah. And once that happens, some people would re be reflective and say, hold on, maybe 
I need to go get myself checked. Yeah. Mm. And I think that's as important. That's the whole idea of this conversation as well, is mm -hmm. that like, making sure that we know when that time is for us to yeah. actually go and get a check. So before us delving into that, though, just from your side, we, we have the technology, we have the activism, but of course, now we just need to get more and more people to realize that they need to, you know, go and get themselves to a, a, a clinic or go to their doctor and go get checked. So what was that cue point? you know, for you in terms of yep. getting checked and saying, hold on, something's wrong here. Yeah, so, I mean, it's it's the, that, that conversation. And I yeah. think that's what Tuppy's talking about, right? We need to have these open conversations about what that looks like. Yes. And the only reason why I, my parents were able to pick up that I had diabetes is because one of their friends' son had diabetes. They had ah, some and, yeah. and my mom was complaining about the amount I'm drinking, eating, urinating, yeah. um, excessive loss of, of weight. And that day I came home and I said, I can't see. I need to go to the optometrist. I need glasses. And she was sitting in the complaint. She's like, but this sounds like... This what sounds like a he, formula, what my, yeah. what my son had many years ago when yes. he was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. And boom. There it was. So it's about the conversation. Absolutely. And it's not only, I think, about when leading up to that diagnosis, but that support when diagnosed. Once that switches. So fit. if someone had to go and find Tuppy's Instagram reel, you know, they've just found out they've got type 1 diabetes. They're going onto Instagram, putting in type 1 yeah. diabetes, finding a Tuppy, and seeing, okay, it's okay that I feel like this right yeah. now. But look at also that technology that has enabled her to, to be able to do, be that. Able yeah. to do that. And that this, I mean, this technology was, hasn't always been around, right? And I think the way in which we've seen this technological innovation time frame, yeah. it's been excessive in yeah. the last five years, which is great. Yeah. Keeps everybody on their toes and it gives that competitive advantage ultimately improving the lives of people with diabetes. Uh, this is the kind of competitive market we love. Exactly. We right. love when humani humanity is winning because technology is pushing itself forward. Yep. We are here for that. Most importantly, we are here for you this morning. If you have diabetes, especially if you are taking those first few steps, please share your journey with us, any insights you've gained and any questions you have. We've got an amazing panel. Holly Ray is going to be stepping in just a moment. 063-408-8863. That's the WhatsApp line to use. We'd love to hear from you. It's my feel-good breakfast show. Welcome back. Thank you so much for rejoining our Health Tuesday diabetes topic this morning. And it affects, get this, approximately 4.5. 4.5 million people in South Africa, with an estimated 12.8% of the adult population living with this condition. That is insane. And we welcome Keegan Hall, Vital Airs Marketing and Product Manager, Diabetes Activist, activist Tapi Semenya, and of course, a very special guest, Miss Harley Ray, who has stepped into studio <laughs> as well. And we'll gush over her in just a moment. Um, always good catching up with a friend, but especially one who has a perspective to share. Um, and she continues to um, engage in her own journey with diabetes, with a little bit of help from technology that is going to change the game I have no doubts well we've been chatting uh, about you know the the facets of CGM I mean we just learned for the first time what CGM is but now Holly I don't know how you do it because when you're on a stage the adrenaline is literally pumping you have to just be focused and now you also have diabetes so how do you navigate being a performer on a stage with all that pressure and of course be somebody who has to manage their diabetes how does that even work I mean, it's been difficult, and it's been a, a journey of a lot of learning. Yeah. Um, I think being on the, like, I'm on the Dexcom has taught me a lot about what actually happens to my body when I'm on stage, um, what adrenaline actually does, does to my yeah. sugar. Yeah. Um, and the amazing thing is that my entire team are connected and follow, you know, through the, the Share app. So my manager can be standing backstage with a fruit juice if I need it, or with my insulin if I need it, or a bottle of water. Um, so having that has really helped me, being able to yeah. share my journey with, you know, my team and everyone around me, and feel like more, a lot more supported. Yeah. Um, but I also have learned little tips and tricks to help me manage my sugar better, like on the road. Um, having snacks before I get on stage, or you know, if it's a big performance, maybe having a little bit of insulin before I get on stage. Um, so yeah, I think 
the, the longer I'm a diabetic, the more I learn yeah. about my diabetes. It becomes a companion, not this, yeah. this enemy yeah. that's exactly. there. You've got to work around it because yeah. it is what it is. Yeah, and I think something my mum always said to me, especially when I was younger and I was struggling with my diabetes, is don't let your diabetes control you. Yeah. Be in control of your Bless diabetes. Your mom. Um, and that's something I think I'm only coming to terms with now as I'm, I'm an adult. <laughs> you know, what do parents know? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> you're, you're all grown up. Has this informed the cooking show? Were you just not able to find the right kind of food out there to eat that you decided, okay, well, I'm going to create food yeah, that I can eat? Yeah, I think, you know, looking, also having a little sister around and yeah. someone, you always want to feed your kids like healthier stuff. <laughs> Trying. You're trying to be healthy, trying to hide the yeah. vegetables in the food. <laughs> um, so I think, um, yeah, baking with the rice definitely um, is influenced by that. There are a lot of recipes in the show that are diabetic friendly, that are low sugar, low carb, um, giving people sort of the um, tools to swap out different ingredients and, and make normal recipes, diabetic friendly recipes and, and vice versa. Um, but yeah, like I said, it's also just about making kids appreciate food a little bit more. Yeah, and, and appreciate big sisters a little more, yes. man. Aww. And where the food comes from and who makes the food. Exactly. Yeah. Well, we've got a panel over here, so we've got a couple of voice notes. Thank you so much for sending yours. 063 Here's the first. Good morning, Feel Good Expresso team, and to your awesome panel, Mrs. Nirmala Devi Mudli of Amkumas. Yes, a very pertinent topic this morning. Diabetes. Elaborate asymptomatic diabetic because I do know and have been told that you know what sometimes your readings up because of pain in the body but you don't have the symptoms of being a diabetic and you have to go on to the medication. Elaborate on this. Thank you. Have a good day. Um, Neil Miller, thank you so much. She, she's every day blows our minds <laughs> with her statements today. No, uh, you know, surprise. Yeah. A question that cuts through it. I don't know who's best. King, do you want to yeah, give so that a shot? The, yeah. The first thing I would say is, you know, if you are experiencing anything like that, go and see a healthcare provider. Yeah. I think yeah. That, do that, that, that is, yeah. you know, if you if you're experiencing pain and you that is leading to elevation in glu any form of glucose level or any level in the body, please go and see a health. That's a, an alarm. Yeah. Um, and it just, you know, it doesn't mean that you're asymptomatic. I mean, there are those very clear symptoms of diabetes, but. We also need to acknowledge that we do have different diabetes. Right? Yeah. You've got yeah. your type 1 and you've got your type 2 diabetes. Very different in the way in which they present. Um, and, I mean, we can sit here for at least an hour and discuss <laughs> yeah, that, for sure, that yeah. difference. But, um, the, you know, it's just about knowing your body. And I think that's, that's the, the message that we all need to take home is if you feel that there's something wrong, go and check it out. Don't, don't live in ignorance. Go and get that information that you need yeah. in order to take control. Um, as Holly said, you know, don't let it control you, you control it. And by acknowledging it first is that first step. Um, and that, that would be my, my, my advice to... to Toby, for someone who's wanting to do this, to take that first step, we know there is so much stigma attached to diabetes. I think a person, as soon as you hear the term, you kind of map out the person immediately yeah. in your head. How much of a challenge was that for you to be vulnerable en enough, to be brave enough, to start that journey. And this speaks to what other young people who are going through this right now. What were the big fears for you? Why were you resistant initially? What scared you? I'm being judged. Really? I think that was, yeah, that was the biggest one. Um, wow. Because I feel like, you know, as a young adult, you just, you know, how did you get diabetes? Um, you don't look like somebody living with um, diabetes. Yeah. Um, that's the often you know, the For stigma sure, yeah. that is put out there. It's, you know, you don't look like you're living with diabetes and it's things like, oh, you're skinny. Um, and diabetes is not to do with like body weight or anything like that, yeah. you know? Um, anybody can get diabetes. And I mean, for me, my parents don't have diabetes. I'm the only person in my family. Um, so that was the biggest thing. And also not being heard. I think, yeah. you know, when you, your family as well, you get judged by them and then you get judged by community. So it's, how do you have it, but your parents don't, don't have, have it? it yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because people need to understand, mm. which is yeah. why you need to become an activist <laughs> to tell people. I absolutely love this. Guys, thank you so much for joining us. We're going to continue this discussion and get into how this technology is helping Holly specifically manage what sounds like the craziest schedule. So if any of you are thinking that diabetes is going to slow you down, you are wrong. We'll see you now. <laughs> it's my feel-good show.
Welcome back to your Feel Good Breakfast Show. This is Expresso on S3, and we're back with our discussion about diabetes. Although most people living with diabetes receive an official diagnosis, 54% of all adults in Africa with diabetes are undiagnosed. The treatment spectrum for diabetes management has rapidly advanced in recent years with new approvals, expanded indications, and technological innovations were all contributing to developing new approaches to diabetes care. And this entire spectrum is important for us to have a panel to discuss it. So Absolutely. that's why we have uh, the, the best people we could find, Keegan Hall, Vital Airs Marketing and Product Manager, Diabetes Activist Tapi Semenya, as well as Musician Holly Ray, just to make sure that all of your questions are answered and that we ensure that you are surrounded by care as well as the honesty of uh, diabetes and, and what it is and what it means and how you are not alone, not even close. Not even close. Terrifying that ha more than half of South Africans living yeah. with diabetes will never know. They will yeah. only know <coughs> the after effects. We're talking tech. We're talking G7, baby. Um, G7 does G7. have that seven to it. G7? Seven. I know this product's going to be G4, successful. Like yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but this really does seem like a game changer. So, Keegan, maybe yep. you can talk us through the tech here as it applies, and maybe we can actually see it play out. Yep. So, fill us in here. How does this little device change the game? So, the, I mean, and just maybe to take a back step of like five years, right? Yeah. So, if we look at the CGM space, within Dexcom in South Africa um, five years ago, it was borderline archaic yeah. almost. Analog. You know, yes, your finger, yeah, I mean, yeah. you had to carry around a, a separate device. Oh my gosh, I remember we had to have big handbags <laughs> just to carry out <laughs> Oh my out word. <laughs> and not on purpose. Imagine, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I just had to carry around big handbags. <laughs> <laughs> and not um, on purpose. Yeah. Not on purpose. So, um, and I, the way I've seen in the last five years, the, the innovation of yep. Dexcom um, and with us within Vital Air Diabetes to, to bring this technology to South Africans who, who need it because, and I won't say it, I'm sure they'll say it too, mm. it is game changing. Yeah. If I look at myself, I mean, having 288 glucose readings a day, I mean, off, 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 off air we were just talking about data. Yeah. Now that yeah. is data. That is data. I mean, sure. normally, you know, someone would only be testing four or five if really good eight times a day now you're getting 288 wow. per day so imagine the the power and we're empowering people living with diabetes patterns, patterns. Oh. i mean if holly goes on stage she can get a an urgent low soon alarm that will tell her that in 20 minutes you will be low you're not low yet so let's fix it now so Before what is the drama? Just, just start <laughs> on that yeah, thing. Yeah, the intro is a bit longer. Bass solo. There's no bass solo. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, and, and that's what this type of technology does. It, it fits into someone's life. Yeah. Really. I mean, the warm-up of this is the, the fastest um, of any other system. 30 minutes takes you 30 minutes before you get your glucose readings. It's the most accurate CGM on the market. Um, it is, it, it, what, we, what we say is that it integrates into you sure. and gives you more you. We want you to be more you. More you. More you. Less of the other stuff. With G7. <laughs> Does it work in other ways? Can you know, <laughs> just <laughs> sort myself out? I'd love to see this in action. Please. Yes, I mean, I mean, Holly and Tuppy will both remember how, you know, the applicators have changed so much over the years, right? Okay. Everyone used to be this okay, big, well, at, like... At, at the moment, sorry, at the moment, it's giving Bluetooth speaker. <laughs> uh, just... Cole, you can hear it there. I can, it's, 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 I can it's, hear it. It works one. very well. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, and, and that's the thing, right, yeah. is that we have to also innovate in the sense of making these types of things easier to use. Yeah, yeah. It can't be a complicated... Yeah, accessible, yeah complicated way of, of doing things. So I'm going to ask Tapi to actually... It's not painful, guys. It's not painful, yeah. That's exactly. the thing everyone asks me. It's like, is it painful? Yeah. I'm like, I don't feel anything. anything. I've got mine on my tummy at the moment. Do not feel a thing. Wow. So, and, and, that, and that is huge for us, right? As a company, as Vital Aid Diabetes, that's what we want to hear from our customers. Yeah. And from, from the people that we, that we are here to, to serve. To and, to, yeah. and to add that value, you know? I mean... We are, are definitely moving away from just, here's your product, good luck. Yeah. We are here to be there for you, right? We're giving you value. 
Um, and having technologies such as the Dexcom G7 helps us with that. So, Tuppy? Sure. There we go. Now, yes, you know, please. I'd actually, I really want to see this in, in motion. <laughs> what I love about this is because every new client is another source of information that yeah. informs the bigger picture. Is another person joining the community to share in this information to improve the overall. Yep. Absolutely love that. And the best thing is, right, is that this is indicated for children as young as two years old. So Get out. if you have your, ch I mean, there couldn't be anything worse than for a parent. Oh, oh sorry, I was watching this. I was yeah. waiting for yeah. a wince. So you push down. Okay. And there we go. Yeah. Sorry, what? <laughs> yeah, and we're done. Are you just really hardcore? Or is <laughs> that, <laughs> what? You, you did give me quite a hardcore look there when you did that. Uh, You're like, I'm not going to break. If you break, I'm going to break. And that's, that's, that's your signal center. That's that, what gives yeah. you all the readings, right? So there, there's a little sensor now that's been inserted into Tuppy's interstitial fluid. There's a Bluetooth um, transmitter within the, the sensor itself that will now send oh, her wow. glucose readings to her mobile phone. I almost um, want to join your app thing so I can see, <laughs> your readings, see how you're doing. <laughs> you know, just um, and Hardy, like, uh, yeah, as, as I mean, Hardy I can mentioned. show you mine. So I've got mine. Mine's active. It's been working. So, yeah, you can see that's kind of what it looks like. You have 24-7 sugar readings. Oh, wow. So like I had a low in the morning, I can go six hours. Um, I had like a drop in the morning and it woke me up so that I don't get to a point where I'm like shaking, I can't do anything. Yeah. It wakes me up before it gets too low. Um, and that's the thing, because I used to have a lot of nighttime lows um, and sort of like all early morning lows because you know, your food that you ate for dinner yes. is now yeah. out of your system, it's digested and then I'd have like a drop in the morning. And what I love about this is it wakes me up before I have that drop so I can fix it um, and then just go back to sleep because I know if anything happens, it's going to wake me up. What, what's that like, going back yeah. to sleep? Is that, is yeah, that what a nice is that feeling? It's going nice. Back to yeah, sleep. Before, I'd have to like wait, <laughs> eat something, wait 15 minutes, prick my sugar. Um, okay, if it's not okay, wait another 15 yeah. minutes, prick. Wait, like it was a traumatic crazy, yeah, experience. And the crazy thing, you wouldn't even know, have known any of no, that previously. Exactly. And you think about a mother, right, who's just had a child that's been diagnosed with diabetes. And there's many a times that we, we hear when we get that feedback and the one thing, there's two things that a child, uh, one thing a child says, one thing a mother says, yeah. is that a mother or a parent will say, we finally can sleep yeah. at night because we don't have to get up, wake our child up, yeah. prick their Formatize finger, them. Yeah. see what's happening and be like, okay, you can go to sleep or no, yeah. Have How do you explain that something. to a two, three year old? And man. then from a child perspective, imagine being able to come home from school and the first question isn't, what was your glucose today? It was, how was your day? Oh. Oh, and right. that's what this type of G7 <laughs> technology brings to people living with diabetes. I mean, I said it in the No, but I've, yes. I've got two you know, young it, kids, it, Brie. I'm about, just, I'm about a second away from bawling my yeah. eyes out right now <laughs> as, as I'm prone it's to intense. doing this show. But yeah. that's why we do what we do. And that's why they, they do what they do. I right? Tuppy as an activist and, and Holly um, bringing her story to, to the whole topic. Well done. I'm going to say to you and the community that has brought us to this point, because I have a feeling it's not just one company, it is a community yep. of people who are living with diabetes, not suffering from it yes. exactly. at that extent exactly. anymore, but Thriving. living with that. And I absolutely love the fact we had such an amazing panel this morning. We love you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. You all look incredible. Holly is going to perform for us in just a moment.